Let me hear that again. Guard your heart from offense. Yes, Marion. Sorry. What? Nehemiah was called to rebuild the temple. Good pointers. That's going to help me preach this better. Anyone else? Anyone else? One more, one more. Let me get one more. Yeah, Jerusha, go ahead. Scream, shout it out. I could not hear you. The spirit of discernment when the Lord gives you. Wow, come on. You guys were listening last Sunday. That's good. I feel a little hopeful that I'm doing good. <laughs> good. I want to touch on something this evening, picking it up from where we left off. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. And I want to help you see this evening, why would God choose Matthew the tax collector over the learned men. Proverbs chapter 18. Verse 19. Proverbs chapter 18. Verse 19. If you're there, give me an amen. Amen. A brother offended is harder to win over than a fortified city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. Offense is such a terrible thing. The scripture says here, a brother offended is harder to win over than a fortified city. You know, we're going after the city of Mississauga and the neighboring cities and so on. I'm going after for some work in India. And so we, we, have, we, we all have this mission. But if a brother is offended, it's harder to turn him over or turn her over to the Lord because offense is such a terrible thing. It kind of pushes us away from even reaching out to them. And so the Lord is beginning to teach us here through Mark chapter 2 that the learned people like the Pharisees and the Sadducees were debating what was going on in the meeting rather than turning their heart unto the Lord and say, oh God, how sinful we are that we missed it. So the Lord turns away from the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he goes and invites a Levi, a tax collector, a sinful man in his time and says, come and be my disciple. It kind of, if you are in today's world, it kind of, it, it kind of throws you off a bit. Just think of that, but, well, I've been coming to church for 20 years. I've been tithing regularly. I've been listening to all the word and everything you say. And then you go on the street and you find somebody and he says, hey, I want to make you the leader in the church. Like, you will be offended. But he says, don't take offense at that. Because the Lord does things in a very miraculous way that causes us to almost get triggered in our heart like, God, I don't like that. I don't like this, God. I, I wish it were, had to come this way and that way. So we have this mindset that God has to come to me this way so that I can come to him that way. And we have this kind of negotiation going on in our heart where God would meet me this way halfway and I could meet him halfway and then I can work along with him. And God doesn't operate that way. You know the Toronto story. When John and Carol spent their beginning of their mornings in before the Lord, and they're like, Lord, we are ready to do anything that it causes you to move in our life. And when the Holy Spirit came, millions of people came through the door. There were many people who were offended. Many pastors who were offended. Many movements who were offended. And they're like, this is not of God. But they said, no, God moved in our life. God moved in our, in, our, in our church. God moving in us. We're going for it. So let me give you a little word of caution. 
when the Holy Spirit moves and when somebody's obeying the voice of the Lord, you begin to follow that person or that heart or whatever God is doing rather than putting a little offense and putting a little, oh, well, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm going to have a little debate, I'm going to pray about it, I'm going to, th- you can do all that you want, but what if you miss the movement of God that God is about to do in you, through you, for you, and through your life, you just missed it. You need to step in and not have a debate at that moment. Say, God, you're about to do something. Let me give you a little story. Marina and I, we seek the Lord a lot. We learn the lessons the hard way. That seek him with all your heart, with all your mind, and he will show things to you. And in our seeking the Lord, a young man from Netherlands, Noah, sent us a little prophetic word and said, Hey, Faustin and Marina, I was in IHOP and I was um, just having my time of worship and the Lord interrupted my time of worship and he said, Call Faustin and Marina, tell them to start something on a Tuesday night. The people in our leaders, you know what, I will, I've talked to you about it already. So I got my group of people together and I said, Hey, I just sensed this Noah that had this word. And so we began to pray about it, seek the Lord, and Tuesday is like it was an odd evening to pick on. We were like, ah, oh, I don't know whether we know. Like, and then, long story short, we began to invite Jim Paul, who's a prophetic guy in the Hamilton area, and he invited a pastor friend from the Mississauga area, Jimmy Kim, and like the connection began. The Sunday before, I am in prayer before the Lord. And the Lord reminds me, and he says, do not ignore the poor. I'm like, what's going on, God? And Jimmy shows up, and Jimmy says, we have a church, and it is basically for homeless people and people who are mentally disabled. And we do it on a Tuesday night. It became so clear. So we now are partnering with him. This coming Tuesday, we're going to be there at 5.30. Now he meets in a park. He has sometimes 30, 40 people show up. It is the most disorganized church, I can tell you, is because they're homeless people. Mike, Marina's husband, and I are very regular there. And it it seems like a disorganized, but it's okay because God shows up. It's okay. The guy does worship. The guy does preaching and breaks into a small group, but the Lord meets him with them. I'm seeing homeless people are like turning to the Lord. Guys, what if the Lord is doing something very different? And what if we do not shift the way we think and begin to move towards that because God is about to do something very different. So we have to move ourselves from where we have become too comfortable with to move to where God is about to do something very different. Church has become very quiet on that note. Turn with me back to Mark chapter 2. Let me pick it up where I left it off last Sunday. Look at verse, Mark chapter 2, verse 22. No one puts new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost as well as the wine skin. But new wine must be put into new wine skins. I made some note here. A wine is con- continuously fermenting. When a, a wine is in the process of fermenting, you can put it in an old wine skin and it will burst. Because fermentation causes the skin, if cannot hold it together, it will burst. That's why it is highly recommended that you put the new wine in a new wine skin. That way it allows the fermentation to go well. Now why would Jesus use that analogy in his time to the Pharisees and the scribes? Why would Jesus remind us that do not get too caught up with the old wine skin? It is a reminder to you and I, we get too accustomed to doing church or too accustomed to doing things the same normal way. 
and we do not allow anything to shift in our schedule or in our thing. And we're like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do that. Oh, that's my time to do this, and that's my time to do that. And we kind of do not want God to step in. The Holy Spirit is the ever-living one who continually is on the move to bring the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. He's on the move. Hear me well. He's on the move and he's looking for people who are willing to step up and say, I am willing to go forward and do things what the Lord has called me to do. However, it needs to fit into my schedule. The moment you have that kind of mindset, God would go to the next person. We must learn to change the way we think. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That means I must allow my mind to be renewed and allow God to say, God, do what seems good at this moment. I am telling you, my brothers and sisters, in this church, we are seeing spouses coming to know the Lord. In this church, we are seeing people have healed from sicknesses. In this church, we are beginning to see. Why? Because we made a mandate upon ourselves. God, you, the Holy Spirit, is a senior leader or pastor of this church, and we will follow you whatever you do. We will do whatever you ask us to do, even if it means if I have to change the schedule on myself. And the more you begin to operate in that, my brothers and sisters, look at me really well on this. We're not doing programs. We're going after God. The more you learn to go after God, God will begin to move in your life like never before. Do you know how excited Marina and I get every time we have to serve the Lord? Worship is something so integral in our life because we like, God, we want it. What we saw this evening, we didn't plan it. God did it. Are you with me? Okay, let me give you some pointers and then we'll break into groups. Here are some points that I made. Don't take offense at a leader or a pastor because they're not doing according to your understanding. Let God be the judge. You say to the Lord, here am I, use me however you like, even if I do not understand. Now let me try and help you understand what I'm, what I'm saying here. I am not doing this to fit a program. I am not doing this to fit my schedule. I'm not doing this to make look good. I am waiting on God, Marina and I, seeking the Lord, saying, God, we want what you're doing at this hour. We want where you're going at this hour. We want to see what you're about to do. Because we know of John and Carol, who are our leaders who have set an example, who set a, a set a high plateau for us, where they began to lay down their life in the morning, say, Lord, we're going to go after you. They've set the standard before us. That is an example for us to say, God, we will do what you tell us to do. Don't let offense rob you of what God is about to do to you, through you, for you, and things you will see like never before. Point number two. Don't judge past movements and revivals. Do not judge anything God is doing on earth right now. Oh, I don't know if that is of God. Well, I don't know if this is of God. You and I are not judge. Let God be the judge. Walk in forgiveness and grace when you do not agree with the person. You know, Duncan Smith, who is our new leader who's taken over from John and Carol, Duncan and Kate, said something very beautiful recently. He said, if you want enemy off your back, if you don't want the enemy ever to come and trample you into your life, walk in grace and forgiveness. The enemy has no ground in your life. I loved it when he said that. The more you walk with grace and forgiveness, the enemy has no ground over you. I know many of you, I have done this demonstration before, but I feel like I should do this again quickly. Here is again the, the law of grace and forgiveness. This is where God operates. For those who are watching me on video, you may only see my leg. You know, This is where God is operating. This is where the law of grace and forgiveness operates. This is where God brings blessing. 
This is John Arnott's beautiful way of explaining law and grace. This is where uh, the grace and forgiveness, this is where blessings come. This is where no sickness come. This is where no curses come. This is where things begin to happen in your life. This is where fruitfulness begin to happen. And here is the law of an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. That means if somebody did something wrong to me, and if I get angry with that person, then you got angry with me, and I got angry with you, justice was done. When a person lives in the place of grace and forgiveness, when somebody at the bottom begins to punch me, or hate me, or say words to me, if I do this, I just went down into the place where there is sickness, where there is problem, where there is issues, where there is trouble. But if I remain up here and I say, that's okay. That person doesn't understand. I'm not going to take offense at you, what you just did to me. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to walk in grace. I'm going to walk in freedom. And I'm going to release you from my heart because I want the blessing. How many like the blessing? I want the love of God. I want the grace of God. I want fruitfulness in my life. I am not coming in that region. So I choose to remain here. I am not the judge. God is. Did you get that? This is very important for every Christian walking on this earth. Grace and forgiveness will keep the enemy away from you. Let me kind of wrap this up quickly. If God is going to do a new way of his next move, he expects, I've already talked about that. You will miss your opportunity for God to use you if it is on your terms. I talked about that. Serve the Lord from a place of rest. Sabbath was made for man. Pick your day of rest. Let me talk about that for a few minutes. We have chosen Sunday as a place of a day of Sabbath. It's very important. It's very important. Marina and I have a rule in our house. He said, we'll do all kinds of things through the week. But Sunday, it's for the Lord. We will spend time reading the word of God. We'll spend time. We won't do any shopping or grocery or whatever. We can have hold it on another day. And we said, this is a day that belongs to the Lord. We will give it to church. It was very uncomfortable even for our family because we used to have our family time together in the evening. We had to tell our children, guys, our service is in the evening. Sorry, we'll have to find another evening. For some weeks, we, do not, we don't see our children. We're just like, okay, that's, that's okay. Why am I saying this? Because if you are consistent and you stay in the place of rest before the Lord, the Lord will honor you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will watch over you. Don't make Sunday as an optional day. At least we believe in that. Let Sunday be a day unto the Lord. It is a day we seek Him. It is a day we, we, we worship Him. It is a day we fellowship with one another. That is so important. And I guess I'm making my last two points. Serving the Lord is serving under someone's leadership, not on your own. If you're serving the Lord on your own, you're operating under a rebellious spirit like King Saul. You know the story. Saul got appointed as the first king of Israel. And he took on the leadership and he began to run the country. But God had put prophet Samuel over him so that he could abide by the word of God. He could abide by the laws of God. However, he took things in his hand and began to ignore what prophet Samuel was saying. And he not only lost his kingdom, he lost even his own children. Being under leadership, being under somebody, staying under somebody is when you will operate in leadership. When you choose to operate on your own, oh, it's me and the Lord. We say we bless you, we release you to do whatever God tells you to do. We believe, I believe at Catch the Fire, I am called to stay under leadership under somebody so I can grow in authority. And my very last point, this is where I want to sort of land the plane. You and I have been given the Spirit of God. That you and I have taken this very lightly, at least I have recognized that lately. That the one who lives inside of me 
1 John 4, 4, is far greater than who's out living out in the world. The greatness of God is in me. And yet I limit myself. And God is asking us and, and stirring up our hearts this evening and is saying, do you recognize how I used to call the Old Testament church to meet together? If you read the book of Nehemiah, which Marion mentioned it, you study the book of Nehemiah, study the book of Ezra, and you find out that when they were rebuilding the temple, they had to assign prophets, they had to assign gatekeepers, they had to assign worshippers, they had to assign Levites, they had, they had to set this whole standard just to meet before the Lord and worship Him. And when the Holy Spirit would fall upon them, they had this mandate that we cannot move from this place. We have to stay in the anointing. We have been given the residence of the Spirit of God to live in us. What a difference. Think of that. These guys in the Old Testament gave their livelihood, gave their life, gave their lifestyle, gave everything up just to prepare for a Sunday worship. We have been given the Spirit of God to dwell in us. You and I are the church. Let me close with this. Turn with me to the book of Corinthians. Paul gives a very stern warning to all of us and may it be a warning to you and I. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Paul, the apostle who wrote the epistles, who is the father of the early church, who the Holy Spirit used him and he set a standard and he warned the early church. He warned and he rebuked the early church. And he said, if you do not understand what you are, who you are in and who's in you, you are destroying yourself. That's basically what the scripture said. And this is a scripture for you and I get to awaken in our spirit that what lives inside of you is not the building. It's not the organization, not the brand name, not, oh, I go to Catch the Fire, or I go to this one, or I go to that one. I belong to this church or this pastor. He's got none of that. Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know, the word do you not know, Paul addressed that nine times, correcting them about what they were doing is wrong. And understand that you are the temple of God. I just explained to you, Nehemiah, to have a temple worship, brought about 40,000, 50,000 people just to do Sunday worship because they had an order in place. And that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. But we, after Jesus died for you and I, raised himself up, given us the Holy Spirit, we take him for granted. That grieves me more than anything right now. And I grieve for myself. Because sometimes I take it for granted. And here's what he says. Do you not know and understand you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy the destroyer for the temple of God is holy and that's what you are. Paul is making it very clear. You are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit resides in you. If anybody destroys this temple of God, God will destroy you and that's what you are. He's rebuking them for not living a Christian life holy life. He's rebuking them for not following what God has invested in your life and my life. And the Lord is saying to us, awaken yourself. Awaken yourself and recognize and acknowledge that the Lord God who lives inside of me is saying to you, I am looking for a church that is willing to live inside, allowing me to live inside of you so that I can bring my glory through you. I can awaken you so that you can see what I'm about to do through your life. There's greater glory in you that you ever imagined. 
There's greater power in you than you have ever imagined because God is about to demonstrate on this earth something more powerful that you have never imagined. Let's all stand. We may not do small group today, but I just feel the presence of God in this. If I could ask Bernie to come and play the keys, if he's around. Oh, Holy Spirit. My question to you and I this evening, do you know that you are the church? Do you know that the Father God, what he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, you are made in the image and the likeness of God, is the very thing he has fulfilled it in your life right at this very moment? And do you know that this is a season God wants to demonstrate his power and glory through you and I? Do you know that he wants to bring glory to his name by showing that how powerful he's in you? Maybe you're in this room and say, you have no idea what I'm going through. I don't, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. You have no idea I'm going through hell in my home. You have no idea I, what, what, what suffering we are going through in our life. You have one choice to make. And the choice is, would you allow the greatness of God in you to be released out of your heart so that he could be revealed in you, through you, and he could use you for you, for your family, for your home. The power is in your hand. The rain is in your hand. The one person who could stop the move of God in your life is you. And the one person who can move the move of God in you is you. Are you willing to become dangerous? Are you willing to step out? Or are you going to be afraid and fearful? Are you going to say, Oh, you don't know. I got to pay my bills. You don't know. I have a status. You don't know. In my culture, we don't do this. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart this evening. I said, would you let me in? Would you let me out? So I can move on your behalf. That I can make myself known unto people around you. That I am your father. And I will lift you up. I will cause you to see the horizon like never before. Oh, Holy Spirit. I don't know. I just sense it's a very different meeting today. Oh, Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do this evening. I take myself off. Move among us this evening. You know, Marina and I always say this, one word from the Lord could change my life. One spoken word from heaven could change your destiny. One word from God. It all it takes. One word. Hebrews 11.3 says that he created this universe by the word of God. What was not seen, what was not visible, he created it by his spoken word. One word from God can change everything in your life. Are you ready to be, be that soil, that good soil from Matthew 13, that the word of God would fall into your heart? Ah, Holy Spirit. I don't know, I just feel like challenging you this evening. Come, Holy Spirit.
if you need a touch from god if you need a move from god i ask you to come forward oh holy spirit whatever you do in this room come do lord we open the stadium we open this this auditorium we open this thing my god my god move among us we don't want another nice meeting we don't want another nice life we don't want another sunday we want a shift in our life oh jesus move among us this evening move among us this evening oh holy spirit i ask you this evening lord we are hungry for you if you're hungry for him tell him thirsty for you god we don't want another sunday with programs we don't want another life with mundane things we want the zoe life of god to move in us so that we are on fire for god like never before we are on fire for god like never before oh jesus we are on fire for god like never before would you pray right now with me and say god use me use me lord i will do whatever you ask of me to do this evening speak to my heart speak to my soul speak to my spirit speak to my inner man shake me out of this fear zone that i'm in shake me out of this comfort zone that i'm in oh living god move Let move among us oh father thank you jesus dennis can you come and help me catch Thank you Father. Oh Holy Spirit, fire of a pull. Fire over you pull. I give you this fire for your life to turn around and shift. Shift for good. It is time for something new. Lord, do this for Marina, for Mike, for Ashlyn. Oh God, release them. for such a new anointing to come upon their lives oh god move like never before i give you this fire marina i give you this fire thank you jesus oh holy spirit fill her up fire on you fire on you fire on you right now thank you lord fill them up lord fill them up lord fill them up make them more hungry make them more thirsty lord thirsty lord thirsty lord oh holy spirit come fall fresh on this dear one oh father come right now fill her up fill her up let her be a conduit for your name's sake Oh Jesus come right now fire on you fire on you fill her up lord fill her up lord oh holy spirit fire of the living god i release you fire on this dear one fill her up you're okay dear you can sit if you want jesus fill her up god loves you holy spirit fill her up. Jesus fill her up fall fresh on this revive her spirit revive her life that she may know that Jesus is lord i bless you i bless you to experience the goodness of god more lord fill her up fill her up lord i pray for nancy fill her up fill her up 
more, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Call join. Join hands together. Father, bless them. Bless them. Jesus be the Lord of their life. Jesus be the Lord of his life. Let him know that all things are possible with the Lord. I bless you, sir. I bless you to know God in his goodness is going to reward you and he's going to bless you mightily with greater things. Things you have least expected. The Father wants to do for you. I bless you both to know that you, go, you both are going to soar like never before. I bless you both. Oh, Jesus, do this, Lord. Oh, Father, I pray that the fire of God visit Marion and do a new thing in her home for her and Philip. Jesus, move. Move, move, move in her. Move in her. Move in her like never before. I release this fire over you, Marion. I give you this fire. Oh, Jesus, I thank you for Irene, Lord. God, I know she's a powerhouse in the anointing. God, fill her spirit. Fill her spirit. I break off every discouragement of you now. I break off anything that is not of God of you now. And I say, go higher. Go deeper, Irene. Go deeper for you and Diane. And go deeper for the kingdom of God is within you. And it is like a powerhouse. God will use you mightily. Just fall under his anointing and see what God can do. I bless you, Jerusha. I bless your life. You are such an instrument of God. Oh, Father, I pray. Let this wonder working power of the anointing, Lord, cause her to experience greater things. Greater things. Oh, Jesus, fill her up. Fill her up. Fill her up. Fill her up, Lord. Fill her up. Fill her up. Fill her up. More, Lord, for Jabin. Fill him up. And fill up Dan and Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this anointing in this house. Father, we honor you for what you have done this evening. God, we just pray that you continue to immerse us in the anointing. Fill him up, Lord. Fill him up. Fire in you, Diana. Fire in you. I give you this fire. I give you this fire. Oh God, just don't be in a hurry to go. Just, if you're not in a hurry, just stay in the anointing for a little few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. More, Lord. Father, bless this dear man. Jesus, fill them. Uh, fill them. Lord, I pray a blessing upon him that he may know that the goodness of God will increase in his life. Jesus loves you, sir. And Jesus says to you, don't be afraid. I'm about to make all things new in your life. Believe in me. Believe in my life. Believe what I have done for you on the cross. And I will make all things new. I bless you today, this evening. In Jesus' mighty name. I bless this young man, your son. I bless him. Lord, I pray that he would grow in the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for what you've done this evening. We bless your name, O oh Father. We praise you and we surrender the rest of our evening to you. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen.
fellowship with one another, talk to one another. If anybody needs prayer, um, we are here to pray for you.